Welcome everybody back to Boost Motion, guys. And today we're going to be installing the Burger Tuning JB4 on my 2015 Mercedes C63. So these are some of the tools I'm going to need to install it. If I do need any other tools, I will definitely let you guys know. But briefly, you're going to need a T25 to T30. You're going to need a flathead, some screwdrivers, flathead, uh, channel pliers. Um, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket, a 7 millimeter socket. I got different ratchets with it. I also got a a different um screwdriver attachment. I think I have a T25 on this on somewhere between here. And just a regular clamp or uh vice clips, whatever you got to do and some gloves. Um we'll see what else we may need as the time goes, but we're going to be installing this on the C63 today. I'm also going to put a link above to just setting up the JB4 and knowing what parts go to what where but because this also is an install video i'll just quickly recap as the install goes guys so now we're with the c63 um, i'm gonna start with some of the first instructions we're gonna pop the hood i'm gonna roll the window down because we're supposed to disconnect the battery ah uh, i gotta open up the car a bit to get to it yeah i'm still learning where this is should be like right here there you go we're gonna pop the hood and then we're gonna start i always recommend Number one, as Burger Tuning states, but even what I state, work on a cold engine. My car has been sitting for probably eight, nine hours. It's super cold right now. And there's a couple things that I'm not, I'm not going to really have to deal with. <laughs> Some of the things I'm not going to have to deal with is um, I don't have recirculation valves. So you guys are going to learn in another video, but I got Wise Tech blow valves. So I don't have to disconnect those, but what we're going to have to do is remove this intake system some of these parts should be really simple to do and we're gonna have to get under this harness to get to a couple of things so let me just get this started and i think that they have the battery over here usually european cars the battery isn't over here um i guess this is where you jump start the car i guess the battery's in the back of the car so i'm gonna go double check that and we should be good first step is so go to the trunk um and locate your negative terminal to your battery and just remove that. So the second part of this install, we have to remove a lot of these little Torx head screws. I believe this is a 25, a T25. Give me one second so I can double check on video for you. This is a T30 in my hand. Yes, these are T25s. So just make sure you get a T25 to remove all four of these on both sides. And these will also unclip too. See, take a look. See, you can just unclip these and these will just come right out. Just put that to the side there. Now what I want you guys to do next is remove these um, 10 millimeter uh, strip straps or clamps to the turbo side. All right, I chose to leave this just to untighten this one and leave that one on. It allows you to pop this up and it should be able just to slide right out like that. All right. And this is the center you have to unclip, all right? Just make sure you unclip that. These filters now are, you can unclip the snorkel from here. And also, if you just pull on this, it should be just clipped in there, see? It just should just come right out. And just remove it here from there, unclip that, unclip that side. And then we'll be, have uh, pretty much the whole air intake system removed. All right, guys, so I put the intake system all together to in, in one whole separate system over here in the trunk because I thought about it. We don't want any debris or anything to get into this intake track because if anything gets into there, then they'll get into the turbo. So I'd rather just not have it laying on top of the hood like that. Um, also, I want to show you guys a couple of things. It's going to be pretty normal to see a little bit of oil in the turbos themselves because you see that little hole right here? That comes from the PCV system. Any oil vapor that comes from the crankcase will start to condense and cool in here. So it's you're going to see this, all right? So don't get worried about this. This isn't nothing crazy or bad to really worry about. Anyways, um, now that we have access to the harness, we're going to start removing some 30 millimeter um, bolts so we can start accessing the MAP sensor and the fuel pressure sensor. Right now, I've been... I've been at this install for only 15 minutes. I'm literally just taking my time, not trying to break anything. So let's see what we can do next. So I want you guys to familiarize yourself with the different sensors we're going to be plugging in today. This is the first uh, fuel pressure sensor right here marked in yellow. 
and then the second center is gonna be over here under this bracket so we're gonna have to loosen up a bunch of this stuff just to allow this harness to move around so we can finagle that out the second fuel pressure sensor is right here access it right is right in front of us make sure we clip that properly and the, the map 3 sensor is right here that we're gonna have to access so once again we're gonna have to unbolt the harness and move a lot of this stuff around to be able to get access to that because I can't can't get access to it the way it is so anyways uh, let's start on the driver side all right so based on the installation guide remember the links will be below we're going to remove first this um, this Torx right here that black one then we're gonna remove this one this one that's three we're gonna remove four and five and I think they said six this one right here but now once I remove this I could allow it to be able to get to that so we're gonna try that out and see if that removes it and allows us to move around this a bit more so I got off five of the bolts, but this one right here, I knew it was gonna be a little bit annoying because look where it is. It's more to a side. My ratchet or my screwdriver is a bit too long to get in on that angle. So what I'm gonna to have to do is either use a small driver, which I really don't have a small driver, or I'm gonna to have to get a socket that I can put this 30 millimeter in like this so that I can be able to just use the wrench to um, clip it open or uh, to pretty much break it up and open it up all right I want to show you guys what I did I pretty much got a, a fourth one fourth um, socket and that pretty much fits right in there I got a swivel too just so I can get a little bit of air if I do run out of space and I also got an, uh, a small quarter inch um, open ended socket wrench and closed wrench so just in case that this doesn't give enough room I could just use this all right cross my pro tip also another pro tip that I'm doing right here is well be very careful on where you put these screws but I put these screws in the orientation of where they go so this screw goes here this screw goes here because these screws I mean these bolts have different sizes so this one goes here this one you see is longer, goes there, and then of course this one's a completely different size, so that goes there. So now I'm gonna see if I can remove this one, and I'll let you guys know. So I tried the um, wrench method, that didn't work. So I switched over to this method, um, just using the socket with the open-ended wrench on it. Uh, that broke tension, and you gotta be very careful because if you drop this head, that's pretty much it. So just try your best to get like maybe a small Torx wrench and that will probably help a lot a lot more but yeah this is the way that i'm doing it it is a little bit unorthodox all right so remember the orientation i have this one as the bolt that i just took out these two are up here i should actually put this one right here so i could kind of remember where it goes um so now we have a lot more movement here i think i could probably take this bolt off too that will probably give me a little bit more room. I'll give that a shot. That could probably allow me to pick this up a little bit more. You really can't move it too, too much. But you see where the sensor is now? The sensor is right there. So we'll see what we can do. Um, I'm going to continue. Let's go on. All right, so you want to get a little bit more room because you want to be able to get this harness more over. The first thing that's tugging that's holding you back is this first fat, this um, zip tie here. You want to pop this zip tie. Once you pop this zip tie, it should give you a little bit more room. This one right here isn't really much of an issue. Um, after that, the next one, depending on how much sensors you need to remove to get more space, you can unclip this one, but make sure that you clip this stuff back in. Don't forget that because if you don't clip it back in, um, you're going to get a bunch of sense lights. You're going to have to take everything back off just to clip it back in, all right? And the last one is this sensor right here. It does give you a little bit of space. I don't think it should be too much of an issue, but let's give that a shot. All right, so guys, I unclipped some of those zip ties there to get a little bit more length. I didn't unclip any of the harnesses or anything like that, all right? Now, this is going to give me a bit more room to pull this over. 
over and about and you see that little gray clip right there that one right there you gotta push that in and use the flat head to like push this sensor in this direction while pressing down on that clip it's like a two per, two hand thing and then we can get that clip off i'm gonna give that a shot all right tried to get it off by hand this is a very hard sensor to get to it's right here I used a flathead and it like broke off the little gray piece or the gray piece slid off. So that may be an issue in the future because usually those are like the locking clips. So let's get the JB4 and let's see if we can hurry up and install this. All right, so we're going to start to install the sensors. Remember the red, blue, red, yellow, and black goes here first. All right, so I clipped it in. Uh, the gray part, it just broke at this end but it still clips in and this one I literally removed this uh, part of the harness I'm gonna clip it back in this gave me a little bit more leeway to go upwards because the harness was so short the next one that's getting in the way is one of these ones but there's a bunch of stuff in the way but it's mainly this for the heat exchangers it looks like it's for the heat exchangers so this mainly this cooling hose but um outside of that this one should be in. I made sure this is clipped in properly. You see it? Make sure it's clipped in properly. And there's only one orientation to put it in, but just try to always remember the orientation it goes in. And um, now we're gonna do the fuel pressure. You just push that down and pull it up. All right, so the fuel pressure centers on, on thing. So you look for that on the harness. Remember, it's not the brown. This goes to map sensor two, which we're not using. I'm gonna leave this unclipped. I'm just having the clip so I just know not to use it. And once again, you just connect the orange and black, the male to the female, and we should be finished over here. I want you guys to notice it's dummy proof too, because if you try to put it in this way, it doesn't work. You flip it around, it has little grooves, and then it goes in. And make sure everything is clipped in. See? I locked it back into place. See, you can lock it back into place by pressing this. So that pushes it in. And now we're, we're done with this side. Try your best to put this, tuck these things in. And we're going to start putting some of these bolts back real quick. And we're going to move on to the passenger side. All right, now the reason why we did the driver's side side first because I knew it was gonna be a lot harder. So now hopefully this side should be easy because we only have to remove four bolts. This one right here, um, we have to remove, I think it was this one. Let me double check on the JB, uh, on the, what you call it. Yes, we have to remove this one, this one, and this one. And that should allow us to get a lot more leeway and for what I can see, the fuel pressure sensor is right here, so that's not too hard. And the sensor is right here, so hopefully when we move that, we'll have better access to that. We're not going to button up the other side yet, because I'm not going to do that yet. All right, so let's do this real quickly. I'm not going to lie to you, this one's a little bit harder, because you got to hold on by like one hand like this and hold this up. And then use the other hand while holding it up to like pull it out so now i have the harness out here it goes this is how it's supposed to look when at the tab when it's not broken <laughs> and then um that's the clip here so once again we're going to look at this harness remember the closed one is for the map 2 sensor remember the perp remember the purple is for um excuse me guys Bear with me, I have to double check. Let me just double check the installation real quick. All right, I double checked. Yes, you use the purple harness for the MAP2 sensor. Once again, the white and the black is for the MAP, uh, well, this is for the MAP3 sensor. And the white and black, when you leave that one alone, we're gonna leave it unclipped too. And this is gonna be for the fuel pressure. Um, you already guys already saw how to do this. Um, if I have any problems with install this, I'll let you guys know, but we'll start uh, putting all the parts back together if I run into any issues. Um, I'll let you guys know, but outside of that, just do everything in reverse order, and hopefully this will, will be removing, going back to startup. All right, everybody, so everything's clipped in. I'm gonna start trying to make the harness look at least decent. So I'm gonna just start packing these things a little bit kind of under stuff. Um, try not to pinch on the harness too much, and but 
I'm going to just start clapping and put everything back, screwing everything back, and then putting the intake manifold on, which was super easy to take off. And we're going to start the car up. So let's go. All right. Just finished bolting back the intake. There's a couple of things I got to tie up. I got to see if I could find out where to put this for the time being on how I'm going to route it. Um, they have a video talking about that, but I'm not worried about, worried about that right now. I just want to make sure that it's installed properly with no issues. All right, let's go to the car. All right, oh man, I got all this. I just finished cleaning this car. Ah, all right, I'll vacuum that another time. Let's take a look. All right, keys in my pocket. Let's go. Gonna let it run make sure there's no issues all right Woo. we're gonna let it run and let it warm all the way up while it's doing that i'm gonna finish clipping in some of the stuff and i'm gonna try to figure out where i'm gonna rock this now that we have installed the jb4 I'm going to pretty much end the video right here. And the reason why I'm going to end it right here is, well, it was kind of a long install video. Second, the second video is going to be us um, routing the JB4 into the car and connecting it. I'll uh, just make that a short video so that you guys don't have to watch install. Some people might just want to break it up and just understand they don't want to go through the whole video. So I'm going to end it right here. So once again, shout out to Burger Tuning for sponsoring this video. The link will be below to Burger Tuning. Uh, definitely check them out. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, the whole Burger Tuning team. We'll always continue to work with your boy Boost in Motion. Remember, this is the second car that they worked with me with. The first car was my Infinity Q53.0 T. That was more of a heat exchanger sponsorship. Uh, it wasn't a, a JB4 sponsorship, but they want they definitely like the results from just me doing anything with JB4 with Infinity. And now I'm going to do it with the Mercedes C63. So otherwise than that, guys, tap in with me at Boost Motion on IG, Facebook, and Boost Motion Gmail.com. Otherwise than that, guys, you have a good day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost Emotion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.